Hi guys, it's uh, Grant Nelson again here with the Mustache Off Grid YouTube channel. Uh, just uh, figured I'd make a video today, just show you some of the projects I've been working on this spring. Uh, I've gotten quite a bit done since the videos from the fall time and the winter time. Uh, sorry I don't have a trick shot today, my basketball hoops actually broke, the wind knocked it over, and uh, I haven't had a chance to repair the backboard yet. So. Uh, that's where I'm at with that for the moment, but uh, I'll just show you some of the stuff I've been working on. Uh, I've been doing a lot of gardening, and uh, I put in a lot of potatoes. You can see them coming up right here. I got lots of them coming up. I planted them on, uh, I usually plant them the first week of March. And um, I'm going to put okra in back here on this back part, uh, but I haven't put it in yet because... Uh, it just does a little better when it's a little hotter. It's just more of a uh, warm weather crop. It does really well in this uh, part of the country though. And uh, this is my beets. You can see they're just coming up. I actually plant the beets on April 1st. And uh, the reason that I plant the beets, reason that I plant the beets on April 1st is because if you plant them before that, the birds eat all the seed. Uh, that's just uh, how it is here. I planted some uh, spinach in the middle of March and the birds came and they ate all the seeds. And um, because they ate all the seeds, I didn't get any spinach. So uh, I don't know why there's less birds April 1st if they are just coming back from migrating south uh, for the winter. Maybe they're hungrier. Maybe it's just because it's colder. Uh, maybe. Uh, I, uh, another theory I had was that there is some owls that I was hearing. And I thought that maybe um, the owls start breeding around the beginning of April. And maybe that scares them away. So those are some of my theories. But last year I planted on April 1st. And I had a ton of beets. Probably a whole five gallon bucket full of beets. So... Um, and that's not even including the tops, which I eat as well. They taste just like spinach. So um, that's just some of the basics um, on the beets. Why I plant them on April 1st, the first week of April in my region. I've got some onions planted, some onions and some garlic. And uh, these are radishes. I have another thing of radishes in a uh, wheelbarrow down this way. So you can see that. Um, so I've been doing a lot of gardening. I also have some tomatoes planted in my front uh, building. Um, I put in this second chicken coop right here. I haven't cleaned up all the junk on the ground. I actually just finished it a few days ago and I've got some new chickens in here. Some little, little ones. You can see the strategy I used for it. I took old plastic feed sacks and used them right here um as the top part you know i just figured it was a good way to seal that gap and i did a, a shiplap kind of roof on the way down so i just figured i'd show you guys some of them strategies if you're looking for a different strategy for a chicken coop but these ones uh these ones uh, actually came from some eggs from my other chickens that my neighbors hatched for me so uh, it's interesting because the ones that came from are all black, but they came out white and red and black and white speckled and black, so it's kind of cool. Uh, I like the look of them for sure. And I just wanted a couple replacement hens for a couple that are getting older. All right, and then uh, I did plant some new spinach here on uh, April 1st. So you can see it's coming up right here just a little bit. But uh, plant some spinach there. Planted some tomatoes right here. Uh, they haven't came up. I just planted them about two days ago. Um, keep in mind, I plant everything from seed. So I don't actually um, start plants. I haven't started very many plants. Um, other than maybe in some tin cans, things like that. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. I do everything from seed. I think it's a little more sustainable way. Um, I think it's a little better way than buying plants from the store and every year or 
having to start the plants i think it's a lot more maintenance doing it that way and i like planting from seed it just seems like the way that god intended it plant the seed harvest the crop uh this is a peach tree that i planted this year uh, it hasn't come in the bloom yet but uh, my apple trees have really been uh i put these rocks in i kind of like the looks of them along my driveway here uh this is a uh another apple tree i got three apple trees i planted them last year and um you know if you're gonna do the off-grid thing and try to produce your own food um apple trees are a really good sustainable crop that you know fruit trees any fruit trees really are and after the first year um they don't require a lot of maintenance so um just something to keep in mind um i believe it's like I could be wrong on this numbers, but a bushel of apples, you know, that is probably close to a bushel of apples is probably close to a um, 50 pound, 50 pound uh, five gallon bucket full. And I believe an apple tree, you know, produces between like five and 10 bushels. So that's a hundred plus pounds of apples a year. Maybe even, it might've even been 30 bushels. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but 30 bushel of apples, you know, on a mature tree, if that's the case, um, even 10 bushel is an extreme amount of food for very little work. They kind of just sit out there. Uh, I also um, got a new ram, he's out there. He's kind of far out there. I can't zoom in on him very good, but I named them Hercules to go out there with Loretta. And hopefully they'll breed and have some lambs this year for uh, production. And uh, you could probably see potentially that building that I built up there on the corner here. And actually I fenced in more pasture as well. I had this nice acre here fenced in and uh, I fenced in this uh, some of the woods here for them to clear out as well and they did a very nice job uh, clearing out the underbrush in these woods here and back in that way um, but uh, my plan was originally to pull this building on skids in the other pasture but actually it's a little heavy for my truck it was a little muddy got it stuck right here so I put this uh, building right here uh, that I built uh, just kind of a lean-to for them in case it rains. So uh, that one's a little bit more portable um, I built quite a few more rabbit hutches and uh, the um, I put in like a shower in the back of here uh, Which I believe I have another video of that I could maybe combine with this one, but we'll see you know We'll see how it goes uh, but, um, you know, the key, a lot of this stuff is, tr you know, practice, practicing, um, growing, you know, like last year I grew this one thing of potatoes and it did okay. You know, I probably got half a five gallon bucket full of potatoes, but I eat a lot more of that. It's one of the most sustainable crops for off grid. It stores well in the root cellar barrels if you watch my other video and after i harvest these potatoes i realized you know planting is important with your garden and i can put squash in in june after i pick these potatoes and last year after i picked my beets on that bed over there i put squash in and it, i probably got a hundred plus pounds of squash i would guess so I figure that if I, after I pick the beets and the potatoes, I put squash in, then I should, you know, get even squash on top of it. And then um, I'll have plenty of okra. That stuff just grows like a weed. And um, I'm going to grow some uh, zucchini and um, stuff in the front there and some peppers to go along with my tomatoes. But most sustainable crops are, in my opinion, that I've grown out here are squash, potatoes, um, what else was there? Uh, beets do very well. Um, 
and uh, okra. So those are kind of what I'm sticking to. I might put in a row or two of beans just to practice. Um, I've got plans to, uh, I've kind of got my lawnmower running, so I've been using that to haul a lot of stuff. Um, I created a shower system here, and I take this bucket right here, this uh, feed tub, and I put it up here. And uh, what I do is I um, open that nozzle with water, and then I've got a shower because I poke some uh, holes in this right here. And then this right here is a, a burner that I turn on and uh, to heat the water. And I put a piece of uh, sheet metal underneath that, just scrap sheet metal, uh, so that it don't melt the tank. Um, and then I just climb the ladder, put a bucket or two of water in. Uh, probably be good to put in some stairs in there uh, for it, but it's all in progress. But it, it, it's a working shower and I use it. I really enjoy it uh, to have a nice hot shower. Um, here's some horseradish that I planted that my neighbors gave me a couple cuttings of, so I put that in. Um, this is a smokehouse I'm working on. I haven't finished building it yet. Um, I actually need to order a little bit more lumber from the Amish, but um, I wanted to show you guys very simple building strategies. So this is a very simple structure right here, um, but the key to building anything in my opinion, uh, if you're building like a stick frame building, um, you can see these, you, you form the frames, so rectangular or square frames with two by fours. Um, you can throw studs in the middle here for extra support if you want on them. Being this is a very simple structure and it's small, I didn't think I needed to do that. Um, so basically you start with that. You nail these all together straight up and down you can see there's a well maybe you can't see that nail there but there's a nail in here as well uh, well you nail them together so that they're standing straight up and down um, they should kind of fit like a glove you can see where this back side goes into the sideways side and you nail the back you know you can combine them with nails so they stick together and once you get all four, they'll be fairly sturdy, you know. And um, the, it gets even sturdier when you start putting the siding on. And uh, this is all rough cut lumber, so none of it's perfect. And it's just going to be a smokehouse. It's not something I need super structurally sound. So, um, I mean, it's just got a, I mean, it's, it's just a very basic, simple structure. Even, probably even more simple than a shed, but... Um, I used, put this straight down, put two of them across, and there's little gaps between them probably that wide, so you take another one, side it down. Make sure your roof overlaps so that the water, but this seals up the cracks. So it seals up the cracks here, uh, so that way um, there's no air that can get in, or I mean there'll be air that can get in, but it's not... Um, it's not uh it just makes it so that there's no daylight between the the boards there when you do it this way if you do the ship lap like i did on this uh three-sided building over here uh where i butchered my deer in my deer video um i haven't quite figured out the corners on it yet because you can see on the corners you still get some cracks so i haven't quite figured out the corners but when you do it that way um you can seal the, the cracks on those corners. So if I build a structure I need watertight, um, airtight, and I don't want snakes and things getting in, I'll probably build it the other way next time. Um, I do like the shiplap option though, just for like uh, lean-to sheds and things like that, like this. So um, yeah, that's just a couple of the basic things I've been working on. I'm sure there's things I'm forgetting. I had another peach tree back here in the corner. And I'll show you guys that. Man, these things pop right up. See these vines right here? I just mowed them down a week ago and they're already three foot tall. So I'm gonna have to go through there and mow them down again. But uh, here's my other peach tree I put in. 
and it's coming up with some uh, some buds. Seems to be doing a lot better than the one in the front. Um, I've noticed that when I am open my tank up there, a lot of times if it's, you know, if I'm doing some serious, need some serious water and I leave it open, uh, the water runs down the hill there. So I think that that might be why that is doing a little better in that spot, but not 100% sure. Um, but uh, you can see I'm getting some gardening done. Uh, I've got a new ram for my sheep and I've really been making a lot of progress out here. Probably put in a whole nother acre of pasture for them sheep too and they're clearing it out. I'm probably gonna go through there with the chainsaw and cut a few trees out of there, maybe go in there and prune some of the smaller stuff down and uh, hopefully eventually have some more nice grass pasture out there to go along with my acre I have fenced off to the left. And uh, I actually have plans as well in the back woods here uh, to um, uh, clear an acre or so out to grow some oats and some grains in. I think if I could grow oats, it would go a really long way in feeding my rabbits um, naturally. Um, I'll probably side down a lot of the hay. I'm also planning on making a um, box baler, um, hand baler for hay, just to use the grass in my yard for, uh, to get the sheep through the winter and the animals through the winter, rabbits through the winter, and uh, working on feeding things more naturally. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a work in progress. I got some more uh, solar panels here. Uh, so I got them recently. They've been doing a lot better than just the single one. And uh, one of the reasons I got them was uh, they had a hookup to charge my Jackery a little better. The other hookup was working fine, but I only had one panel. And switching between the battery and the Jackery was kind of tough with the two different cords and stuff. So um, that's part of the reason that I did that. Um, but you can see things are becoming more and more sustainable um, I've got a lot better gardening tactics this year than I had last year and um, things are just a work in progress I'm planning on putting a uh, getting a few hogs maybe just to butcher out um, and uh, smoke in the smokehouse as well so I figured they'd do a good job uh, clearing some of the woods in a few days as well uh, they like to eat down their brush and uh, might might help out a little bit so just figured I'd Sit, sit, come on, sit. Oh, good boy, good boy. Lay down, lay down. All right, good boy. Hey guys, let's make Bailey famous. Let's make Bailey famous. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mustache Off Grid. Hope you all have a wonderful day and uh, God bless.